Hello again. I think the title of the video probably gave away what the final tool in our set of fireplace tools is going to be. We have this nice hand-tied broom. I get it out of the package. And this is what we will use to make a fireplace tool. So it'll be something vaguely similar to that. The issue, if it's not obvious already, is how do you attach straw to iron? Forge welding is out of the question, I guarantee it. The solution I like is tubing. And this piece of tube doesn't quite fit. We need something about an inch and three-eighths inside diameter. Let me go look and see if I've got something better out. See, if I'd unwrapped this broom before I started this, I would have known this tube didn't fit. So I found this scrappy bit that I had tried to make a big candle holder out of once, and there's plenty of material left on this end that fits just right. And we'll be able to make a very nice socket to put this broom in. We'll neck this down just like we did when we made a candle holder using a spring fuller and some controlled hammer blows and we'll put a little neck on here. We know that needs to be right about in there. So we'll mark that with a soapstone and hopefully we'll be able to find it again. When we get it hot. So let's go make a little pipe socket here. So this particular spring fuller is a little bit longer on one side so I can hook it on the edge of the hammer die and push down and open it up. That makes life a little bit easier. There have been some questions on the treadle hammer. What is it exactly? And I will do a short video on a lot of these special tools just to highlight what they are, how they work. I'm going to go slow here. It'd be real easy to crush this too. But in essence, the treadle hammer is a foot-powered hammer. It has a 60-pound head weight and has some garage door springs that raise it up. So this will hit as fast as I want to stomp with my left foot. And if my left leg gets tired, I can switch to the right leg. It has a backup drive system that way. But we will do a more thorough video on just the treadle hammer. This will take several heats Don't get in a hurry, but as you go, you'll be able to work a little bit harder and faster once you really have that neck established. A power hammer would be really easy to squish this. You have to have real good control of your hammer. You can also get one of your friends to come over, or one of your family members, a willing teenager or significant other. And they can swing a sledgehammer and do this.
pretty close to as far down as that might want to go there. I'm starting to bottom out on the die, I think. So, that's as far as we're going to be able to go with that. And I'm pretty happy with it. We'll take it over to the anvil. I want to work on this transition here that's a little bit harsh. And then I also want to thin the opening a little bit because I think it's, that tube is just a little heavy looking. Now I'm just going to thin this out a little bit. I don't really want to flare it like we did the candle cup because the broom doesn't need that flare. It's going to flare a little bit. It can't help it. As you thin it, it's got to go somewhere. Now if that needs to be adjusted back to round a little bit, Working it here at the step gives it two points of support plus the hammer, so it's three points of contact, and you're less likely to crush it. So I think that's pretty good for the socket. I've let our socket cool, so we're going to cut it off just where it goes from the thin part back to the, the thick spot there. We want to keep as much of that thin section as we can. So we have our socket, but I think the opening is a little bigger than I'd really like. That hole ends up being about 5 eighths of an inch and the outside is about 7 eighths of an inch. So I think what I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and taper this down. I want this to fit on the end of our handle and I'll show you how that's going to work when we get this done. But I think we're going to just taper that down and try and make this about 3 8 round on the inside. Just like working at the step of the anvil, a V-block in your, in your hardy hole makes a good place to help support this for this kind of work. Now this does represent a little bit of a design as you go philosophy, which I think works pretty well for the most part. Unless you have a specific plan that has to be met, I don't see any problem with changing things a little bit and kind of seeing where the material wants to take you. It's getting a little bit smaller. Mostly I'm still working that shoulder. So it's small enough. I'm not doing a whole lot of work on the very end, but a little bit. And we just keep going like this until we get just what we want.
So I now have three eighths on the inside and about five eighths on the outside. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Knock the high spots off. So that is where we're going to leave the socket, I think. Remember, stay flexible. You might decide you like to do something di different. Well, we now have a socket that will hold the broom, and it's a good tight fit. And I pretty much like how far it goes down. It might have been better to be a hair longer, but when I tapered this, we lost some length. That's just, don't know if it's one way or the other to you. you know, if it matters, do it again. But I think this is going to be okay. Now we know that's as far as that's going to go in there. We know we'd like it roughly the length of the poker or a hair shorter. I don't want the broom any longer. So right about there is where I'm going to want to make the transition here. So I know I need that much. Now, the next thing we need to do is put a little tenon on this that will actually fit into this hole. So I'm going to need just a little bit more material than that. So I'm going to cut it off about a half inch longer and turn that into a, a nice 3 8 round that will fit in this hole. Not every tool in your shop has to make a bunch of noise. I like this old shear. And there's our handle. This next step is really just a matter of getting the cut off end of the handle to fit in the hole of the socket. And there are a few ways you could do this. You could certainly grind it, you could file it, but we're blacksmiths so let's forge it down we just need a little bit of a, a shank on there and we'll make it fit. So we just need a little tenon on here. Doesn't need to be anything perfect. Just enough to go in the socket. I think it could be just a little bit better. Now what I don't want to do is pound on this ring on the top of the handle. That's not bad. Now there's several ways we can attach this. In the per a perfect world we'd forge weld that, but this is a difficult forge weld. The way this is set up, we'd end up crushing this transition in the pipe and I just don't think that's the best way to go in this situation. You could braze it but I don't want to see the the braze material and you can braze in the forge fire and someday we'll cover that as a video. You could make this so it's a tighter fit and thread this and screw it together. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld it and you can weld this any way you're comfortable welding. I try not to include too much welding in my projects but sometimes I think it is appropriate and this is one of those times. And for something like this I tend to default to welding with the oxyacetylene torch. That's my preferred weld for this. You could make it, you could take it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, those aren't traditional blacksmithing techniques. None of the, these welding techniques are, but I think it's the best technique for this particular job in this particular design. In case there's been any doubt watching my previous videos, my channel is primarily to promote blacksmithing technique and not welding technique. I accept that welding is a part of modern day blacksmithing whether I like it or not but everything you need to do as a blacksmith 
you can do without owning a welder. Blacksmiths have been doing it for thousands of years. So this is not considered advocating for welding or advocating a specific type of welding necessarily, nor am I trying to teach you how to weld by doing this. I just feel like it is the appropriate technique at this point. So you can take that for what it's worth. But if you want to learn to weld, I highly recommend learning to weld with a torch. There's a lot to be said for it. But you'll need to find somebody more qualified to teach you than I am. One problem with this is it's round and you got to keep moving it. But now that I got that started, I think I can work it up here. Again, I'm not trying to teach you how to weld, but for those who aren't familiar with this type of welding, what I'm trying to do is just melt the very edges of the two materials and let the material flow together and then add filler rod as necessary to fill any low spots. It's not just a matter of melting filler rod onto the surface and hoping it sticks to something. This is going to take a little bit of cleanup with a file or a grinder and just a hair of forging. I do want to camouflage it and make it go away. The reason I like the gas welding is it's a little slower, a little more methodical, and it gives me a chance to really manipulate my weld puddle and get the weld right where I want it. Somebody that's good with a TIG torch would do this in just a few seconds and be done. But, if you want to learn how, Go take a welding class at your local community college and find out if they've got somebody that actually will teach this. It's really hard to find somebody that will teach torch welding. And if I could find somebody in my area that taught it, I'd be better at it. Okay, thank you. Now personally I'm pretty happy with that weld. Most people would never think twice seeing that on there. They never even notice it or they just wouldn't even think, well that doesn't look very blacksmithy. But personally I would like to try and blend that in with the forging a little bit better. So I'm going to bring that up to a good heat and I'm going to work it very gently. That's another little advantage of torch welding. I know I said I wasn't going to advocate for one kind of welding over another, but it, it certainly sounds like I'm advocating for torch welding, and I suppose I probably am. But uh, the torch weld, or a TIG weld, seems to forge better than a MIG weld does. The MIG weld seems more likely to crack. So, so oxyacetylene torch or TIG torch, either one, is going to be more compatible with forging after the weld. We just want to blend this with the handle. Remember our handle is a square with heavily chamfered corners, so it's almost an octagon. So it's just a matter of catching the edge of that weld and bringing it into that same profile. And then I 
would like to work very lightly where it goes into the socket. And that's going to blend that weld much better. It'll never completely disappear. And I'm never going to lie to anybody and tell them it doesn't have a weld. But I want the, the look to be that of a nice forged piece, not of a nice welded piece. So that is all we are going to do to this handle. I know I said I might do some filing or grinding on the weld, but I don't think it needs it. Here we have our finished broom handle. We have our hand tied broom and these come in a lot of different varieties. You just have to see what you can find. So it's going to look something like that. How do we keep this on this? That's the big question. I can think of two ways right offhand. There may be some other methods that the first would be to simply epoxy this in. Make sure you don't drool epoxy all down this. That would look absolutely terrible. Tape it up really good and get just enough in here to hold this top part in. The other method is to pin it. And I have this 3 16 piece of rod here that I've annealed so it'll head easily. I'm going to drill a hole in here all the way through, put the broom in, drill through the broom, and put the pin in. And that should hold the broom just fine, and it would be easy to replace the broom head if it ever wears out. Using a V-block to hold the round bar helps this come through straight across on the back side. I actually want to countersink this a little bit to give the rivet head a place to go. Make a nice tight attachment. So I have that pin in there and it should come right through the other side if I did everything right. I think that's a little long. I'm going to go grind some of that head off. I think that's too much. I want kind of a flat head rivet here. So I like that a lot better. I've got about uh, 3 16 sticking out each side for a flat head rivet. When you rivet this, you want to be fairly gentle. Or you can end up bending that rivet down inside the the piece. Here's our finished fireplace broom. It's all ready to go. We have a handle that complements or matches our other two tools, the poker and the shovel. A forged socket made out of pipe. A little bit of torch welding. And a nice hand tied broom. It's a very nice complement to our other two tools and should last for many years. This three piece set of tools would make a wonderful Christmas gift and any one tool would be a good gift. They're all useful individually but also the set is really special I think. However, I think there's one more thing we can do to make this set even better. I think it needs something to hang on and that'll be a quick easy project to make three little hooks and put those on a back plate that can be mounted on the wall so we can hang up our three tools side by side next to the wood stove or the fireplace. Like I say, I think this is a great little project. It really involves a lot of good skills between creating a ring, creating shoulders, twists, drawing a taper, going from square to octagon, forging sheet metal, forging pipe, a little bit of a rivet there, splitting on the poker, lots of skills in here. If you haven't watched the other two videos, 
go back and watch them. That's where we show the, on the poker how the handle was done, how the twist and the ring was all done. So this is really out of context if you haven't watched that video. So I really encourage you to go back and watch all three videos and stay tuned for the one on making the little rack that this will hang on. Some other time we'll do a floor standing stand for fireplace tools, but I don't think we'll do it for this set. The broom, I said it's a hand tied broom. This particular broom came from somebody on Instagram who goes by the name of Nightshade Handmade and she is a broom maker. I think she has an Etsy shop as well. I don't know if she has a website. I will try to put a link right down here so you know where to find her if you're looking for brooms, but there are lots of other broom makers out there. Hopefully there's one in your area. Now other alternatives to the pipe socket, if you don't want to forge pipe or you don't want to do the weld and you're trying to think of a way to get away without doing a weld, you can do a flat sheet metal form that's kind of two-sided and rivet it to the end of the handle and then bend it around a, a pipe or a mandrel of some sort to create this shape. I've done those in two and three sided versions and they look very nice. I've seen people do just a spiked version, a long square taper, very thin taper on the end of the bar with some little barbs on it that I believe that they drive down onto the, the end of the broom and stuff it between the fibers. I think that looks a little bit less refined but it might work okay and they, perhaps the best way to do this is talk to the broom maker send them your handle they will tie a lot of these broom makers will tie a broom right to the end of the handle so if you send, send them your forged handle tell them what kind of broom you want they can tie that right to the end and it's all one piece you'll probably have to provide a little hole in the, the handle that they can get their cordage through to hold it on there but if you coordinate with them, that should work just fine. And there are lots of other types of brooms. There are some short brush type brooms available out there. Some of the blacksmithing suppliers that you may find down in my description might have some kind of a fireplace broom. I think Blacksmith Depot has a little brush. Lots of options for fireplace brooms. This is just one approach. Use your imagination. Explore the possibilities. Have a lot of fun with it. In the meantime, I always like it if you give a thumbs up to the video, hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos, get out to the shop, make something, and have some fun. We'll see you later.